Today's lesson is the beggar. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our program. My name is Roger, and my name is Helen. And today we're going to continue to summarize our featured story for this month, "The Beggar" by Anton Chekhov, published way back in 1887. And it's all about a lawyer and a cook and a beggar. And what has happened so far, Helen? Well, so far, Skvortsov. Offered a job to Lushkov. Lushkov reluctantly agreed. The job was to chop wood at Skvortsov's house. And when Lushkov arrived, Skvortsov's cook was kind of annoyed by Lushkov's presence, probably because she saw that he was very frail and weak, and he wouldn't be able to do the job. However, later the cook reported to Skvortsov that Lushkov had finished the job. Job. He did it very well, and in the end, Lushkov was to return and do other jobs around the house. And indeed, that is where we left off. So let's continue to summarize our story today. Let's listen to the first part and see what happens next. Though Lushkov was always drunk, he still returned monthly to be paid for performing chores. Skvortsov had him chop more wood, shovel snow, and beat rugs and mattresses clean. Each time, the cook informed Skvortsov that the work had been done well. I have to finish my chores before I can go out with my friends. 我跟朋友出去前，必须先把日常琐事完成。So Lushkov is working at Skvortsov's house. However, Lushkov still hasn't stopped drinking. Though Lushkov was always drunk, he still returned monthly to be paid. For performing chores, so chores are types of work that you do around the house. In this case, it's chopping wood, and it could be cleaning the kitchen or fixing things around the house. So Skvortsov had him chop more wood. Shovel snow and beat rugs and mattresses clean. These are all examples of chores. Exactly. So, of course, wood was important at the time. So, of course, that was one of the chores that Lushkov had to perform. He had to chop wood. Of course, it's Russia, so there was a lot of snow. You have to shovel the snow, and then, of course, you've got lots of dust in the air. So, you need to beat those rugs to get the dirt and the dust out of them, and you do that also to the mattresses because. Because they get lots of dust and dust mites and nasty things like that, and each time the cook informed Skvortsov that the work had been done well. So the cook is kind of supervising Lushkov, and of course the cook watches Lushkov work, and then the cook reports back to Skvortsov and says, "Hmm, you know Lushkov has done a great job. All of the work." Has been done well. All of the chores had been done well. This, of course, is the past perfect tense here because we're talking about an action that happened further in the past than another action in the past. Yep, and even though the cook's job is to cook and to be in the kitchen mainly, the cook has also taken on the responsibility of making sure that Lushkov is doing the rest of his tasks correctly, and that includes beating rugs and mattresses. So a mattress, as we all know, is the soft part of the bed that you sleep on. And these days, when we choose mattresses, we might want to decide between a firm mattress or Or a soft mattress, or something in between. Back then, there probably weren't that many choices. A lot of mattresses were stuffed with wool, or maybe with feather or cotton. But there probably weren't any mattresses made with springs inside. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our summary. Let's go on now to the second part and find out what happens next. Skvortsov grew to trust Lushkov, even asking him to help the workers when he moved house. 
Although Lushkov barely lifted a finger during this particular job, Skvortsov was delighted he'd shown up sober for the first time and offered to recommend him for a position copying documents at an office. Upon securing this new job, Lushkov never returned for work, and Skvortsov was proud of having set him on the right path. sober. 举例来说, Jeff remained sober so that he could drive his friends home from the party safely. Jeff people who are not sober should never get behind the wheel of a car. delighted. 高兴的,快乐的,或是乐意的。例如, We are delighted that you can spend the afternoon with us. 我们很高兴你可以与我们共度下午时光。或者, The young boy was delighted to see the teddy bear. 那个小男孩看到泰迪熊很高兴。另外将这个字的字尾, The ed,改成ful,就变成了形容词 delightful,指令人愉快的或是欢愉的。我们可以说, Simon's early return was a delightful surprise for the whole family. Simon we had a delightful time at the opera tonight. delight这个字是动词，意思是使愉悦或是使高兴。举例来说, the clown's performances delighted the children. So Lushkov has been working at Skvortsov's house for a while, and Skvortsov grew to trust Lushkov even asking him to help the workers when he moved house. So Skvortsov has grown to have more confidence in Lushkov and has even asked him to make sure that the other workers were doing their jobs and to help the other workers because Skvortsov was moving house. Indeed. So for some reason, Skvortsov needed to move house. He needed to move from one house to another. And when you move to another house, you need to move all that stuff, your furniture, all your papers, your documents, documents, your desks, and all that fun stuff. So, of course, you need workers to do that. And Skvortsov trusted Lushkov and said, hey, why don't you come over and help us move? We're going to move house. We're going to move to another house. And although Lushkov barely lifted a finger during this particular job, Skvortsov was delighted he'd shown up sober for the first time and offered to recommend him for a position copying documents at an office. So here Lushkov did show up for the job, but he did not work very hard. He didn't really do anything. It says he barely lifted a finger. If you don't lift a finger, basically you don't do anything. You don't do any work. But still, Skvortsov was impressed because Lushkov had shown up sober. Skvartsov was delighted that Lushkov had shown up sober. If you're delighted, you're happy about something. If you meet somebody for the first time, I'd like you to meet the sheriff of Rockridge. Oh, I'd be delighted. I would be happy to meet you, sir. And here, of course, he was delighted to see that Lushkov was sober now. And if you're sober, that means you're not drinking when you usually do. Or you might be sober after a party. You had a few beers, maybe a couple of glasses of wine, and you were drunk for a while. But later on, the effects of the alcohol wore off, and now you are sober. You're no longer drunk. Yep. So sober, you can say, is the opposite of being drunk. When you're sober, you're not drunk. And it's the first time that Lushkov arrived to work sober, and he decided that Lushkov was maybe ready for even greater responsibility. So he offered Lushkov to recommend him for an office position, a position copying documents. So a document is a piece of paper with 
official information or important information, and this job would involve copying documents. So today, when we think about copying documents, we are thinking about photocopy machines or Xerox machines. But back then, copying most likely meant writing or using pen and paper to copy the text from one piece of paper to another, and that would be really a move up in terms of career because he is now going for a white collar job or an office job as opposed to a blue collar job, which is a job involving physical labor. It doesn't sound very exciting sitting down at a desk and copying documents. By hand, but at least you're inside. You're not in the cold, and you're not chopping wood outside. So, upon securing this new job, Lushkov never returned for work, and Skvartsov was proud of having set him on the right path. So, upon securing this new job, here "upon" just means when he secured this new job. At the moment that he secured this job, when he got this job, then he never returned for work. This, of course, is referring to. The chores. He did not return to chop wood or do chores around the house because now he has a job somewhere copying documents at an office. So he secured this new job. He got that job, and it was definitely his. Right. So secure is another way of saying to get, but you secure for specific situations. For instance, you can say that you secured a deal if you are the owner of a company. And you want to make a deal with another company, then you can say that you are trying to secure a deal with that company, or you can try to secure a contract—a contract for selling a house or for making some kind of business arrangement. Right, and secure, of course, means to attach something firmly to something else. If you bring a boat into a dock, you need to secure the boat to the dock using rope. You need to tie it to the dock. You need to make sure it stays there and does not float away. But in this particular case, Lushkov secured a new job, and then he never returned for work. And so Skvortsov was proud of having set him on the right path. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's finish things up now with the third part. Two years later, Skvortsov spied a familiar man buying a ticket at a theater and realized it was a much healthier-looking Lushkov. When asked how he was doing, Lushkov replied that he was making a decent living. But when Skvortsov claimed to have saved the beggar through hard work, Lushkov said he'd never really done any labor. Instead, it was the cook who had done it all. She took pity on him, saving him through kindness, and he'd never forget it. With that, Lushkov said goodbye and went inside to watch the show. The last part, we see the phrase "take pity on," meaning pity or sympathy, etc. For example, Carol took pity on the poor little dog and gave it half her sandwich. Carol 同情这只可怜的小狗，于是将三明治分一半给他。也可以说 ，The judge took pity on the poor man who stole bread to feed his family. 法官同情那个偷面包给家人吃的穷苦男子。So we left Skortsov feeling very satisfied and happy with himself, knowing that he helped Lushkov secure a new and better job. And we also found out in the first part that. Skvortsov is somebody who prides himself on his compassion. So up until now, he is feeling very happy with himself about having been able to help Lushkov. Now, two years later, Skvortsov spied a familiar man buying a ticket at a theater and realized it was a much healthier-looking Lushkov. So two years later, Skvortsov is buying tickets. At the theater, and he sees Lushkov. Except this time, Lushkov is much healthier looking. He is no longer frail looking. He is healthier. He almost didn't recognize him, but in the end, he did recognize Lushkov. 
Right, so Lushkov probably was really skinny before, really thin, and did not look healthy. He was frail looking, but now he's had a job for a couple of years, and he's eating well, and he looks healthy now. So of course, Skortsov almost did not recognize him. So here we have the word "spied," the past tense of the word "spy," which could mean that you are a spy for one country trying to get information from another country. You are a spy, or you're spying on someone. But here to spy someone means You see this thing, but you weren't really paying attention. It just kind of caught your attention. Basically, you may not have noticed if you weren't really concentrating. But hey, he noticed a familiar man buying a ticket at a theater. Hey, that looks like Lushkov. And when asked how he was doing, Lushkov replied that he was making a decent living. But when Skvortsov claimed to have saved the beggar through hard work. Lushkov said he'd never really done any labor.、Hmm, that's interesting. So Skvortsov probably thought that he had done Lushkov a favor by offering him that work, but now Lushkov can confess. He can admit. That he never really did any work, which is rather unusual, because we described the story before as Lushkov chopping wood and doing chores around the house. How could that be? Yep. Instead, it was the cook who had done it all. She took pity on him, saving him through kindness, and he'd never forget it. So we discover now that all of the work that had been done efficiently—the wood chopping and the beating of the mattress. And rugs, they were all done by the cook because the cook took pity on Lushkov. When you take pity on someone, you feel sorry for them. So the cook probably saw Lushkov and how frail and weak he was, and realized he would never be able to do that kind of hard labor. So she decided to do it for him without telling Skvortsov. And what Skvortsov saw through the window was probably something that he thought in his mind was going on between the cook and Lushkov, because he was actually just witnessing the scene through the window. He didn't know what they were saying to each other, or how they felt about the situation. Yeah, we probably should have given you a spoiler alert because this does have kind of an interesting ending here. I sort of suspected this at the beginning because the story never really described Lushkov doing the work. All we saw was the axe falling on the ground at Lushkov's feet, and then of course Skvortsov looked away and started to busy himself with other things. So I kind of suspected that maybe the cook had something to do with this, and that in. Indeed, is what happened. So there, you know the ending of the story. It has a surprise twist at the end here. But again, it says that the cook took pity on Lushkov. She pitied him. She felt sorry for him, and she saved him through kindness because, of course, he was frail and weak and a drunk. And the cook turned out to be a really good person. Yes, and with that, Lushkov said goodbye and went inside to watch the show. So Lushkov basically tells Skortsov that it wasn't his insistence of doing hard labor that helped him change his life. It was actually the kindness that was shown to him by the cook. So what Chekhov is actually doing with the story, you can say, is raising the ethical question of how people should help others. Who are in a difficult situation, or who are in a situation through some kind of fault that they have? It could be drunkenness, or it could be people who are addicted to gambling. How do you help these people? Do you make them work hard? And do you believe that hard work is the only way to transform people, or do you show sympathy and, through these acts of kindness, people can find the strength to change? And this is a question that still applies today. Yep, and it also looks like Skvortsov is the person who is helping the drunk out, but it turns out that the cook was more generous, actually doing all of the work for him. And of course, that was a favor that the cook offered. Lushkov, Lushkov would never forget that. So maybe someday Lushkov will return the favor. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher, Hanny.
各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第二部分的最后一句写道 ：Upon securing this new job, Lushkov never returned for work, and Skvortsov was proud of having set him on the right path. 好，那么这个句子里面有两个重点。第一个是句子里面的介系词 upon， 它是表达一怎么样就怎么样，后面可以接名词或是动名词。那么 upon 也可以用 on 来替换，意思相同。我们在使用的时候呢 ，upon 或是用 on 去加名词或动名词呢，这部分可以摆在主要子句的之前或者是之后，只是要特别注意，我们用 upon 或是 on 去加动词 ing 的话，这个动作它的主词必须跟跟主要子句的主词一致，就像我们课文写到说 ，Upon securing this new job, Lushkov never returned for work， 表示说 Lushkov 一得到这份新工作就再也没有回来工作。Upon 后面接了这个动名词 securing， 它的动作主词就是 Lushkov， 跟后面这个主要子句的主词就是同一个人喽。那我们来造一个例句 ：The woman fainted on hearing the shocking news. 一听到那个令人震惊的消息，女子就昏过去了。好，另外有一些常见的句型也可以表达一怎么样就怎么样，像大家熟悉的 as soon as 主词加动词，逗号主词加动词，其中这个 as soon as 也可以换作 once， 或者是用 the instant、the minute、the moment 等等等来去引导时间副词子句。举例来说 ，the moment she saw her parents。Her face broke into a smile. 她一见到爸妈，脸上就突然露出笑容了。好，在我们看到第二个重点是要讲 set somebody on the right path， 让某人在正确的道路上。那这就带有那种让某人迈向正轨的语义。而说到正轨，我们也常常会用 track 这个字 ，t r a c k。track 它除了指小径、小路，它也有轨道的意思。我们说 on track， 字面意思是在轨道上。那引申用来表达说，按照设定好的计划来迈向成功。那我们也常常会用。Back on track， 字面意思是重回轨道，那就是表达说，在经历失败啊、打击等等之后，又回到了正常的状况，也就是回归正轨的意思。举例来说 ，Henry was having a hard time getting his life back on track after the divorce. Henry 在经历离婚之后，生活难以回归正轨。好，另外，如果是 on the right track， 字面意思是在正确的轨道上，那它是用来比喻说事情做对方向、方法得当的意思。那相反词 on the wrong track， 则可以表达用错方法的意思哦。好，那么以上是今天的重点整理，我们来回顾这些单词吧。Chore， Frank isn't allowed to watch TV until he has finished his chores. Mattress. This is the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on. Delighted. Janet was delighted to discover that her package had arrived. Sober. Ever since the accident, Wayne has been completely sober. Document. I'll have those documents on your desk tomorrow morning. Secure. The property developer secured permission to build two new apartment complexes. Discussion starter starts now. It's time now for our discussion starter for today. Here's the question: Did Skvortsov do the right thing by insisting that Lushkov work for him? Why or why not? Well, in my opinion, Skvortsov was right to insist that Lushkov work for him, since through this opportunity he was able to meet the kind-hearted cook. Who was the one who actually helped him? So Skvortsov actually helped Lushkov indirectly, not through the way that he wanted to, but through the situation that he put Lushkov in. Well, I think, in my opinion, I think Skvortsov was wrong to give him work chopping wood because obviously Lushkov was a singer; he was a member of a choir. So maybe Skvortsov should have offered Lushkov a job as a singer in the court there. His house, or something like that, or maybe should have offered him music lessons so that he could sing without drinking. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoyed reading along with us. 
I am Roger. I'm Helen. See See you you next time. time.